This is going to be a video about making corn syrup rocket fuel. Some information here, corn syrup is fructose, 100% fructose, with the chemical formula of C6H12O6. We're also going to be using table sugar, which is sucrose, and sucrose is a mix of fructose and glucose, 50% each one. The chemical formula for glucose is also C6H12O6. What makes fructose and glucose different is that they're structurally different. They're structural isomers of each other. So although they have the same number of elements in each one of them, fructose has a five-member ring and glucose has a six-member ring. And in general, fructose is better than glucose. So eat your fruit and not your frosted flakes. Our oxidizer for this rocket fuel is good old potassium nitrate. And lastly, we're adding iron oxide. Iron oxide is a combustion catalyst and does that by increasing the heat transfer amongst the molecules inside the rocket engine. It also changes the burn rate of the fuel. If you add more, the burn rate goes up. If you add less, it tends to come down. And lastly, because it's Fe2O3, it adds Z3 oxygens to the whole mix, and oxygen is always good when you're burning something. For our materials, we need corn syrup, which is 21% of the mix, or 63 grams. Potassium nitrate, 62% of the mix, which is 186 grams, and this is pretty typical for a rocket engine. You need the oxidizer, usually in the highest quantity. We need sugar, which is 17%. This is table sugar, by the way, or 51 grams for our mix here. And lastly, iron oxide, which is going to be added at 8% of what the total mix here is. And if you weigh out or add these together, I'm sorry, you'll get 300 grams and 8% of 300 grams is 24 grams and this will be added last. We also need a hot pan to melt these things and a blender to chop it up. For our methods, we're going to melt everything together but the iron oxide. At some point, we want to get all of this so hot that it actually boils for maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes. The exact time is not really that important, just that it gets to the boiling temperature at some point. Since it's all syrupy and moves easily, we want to pour it onto a nonstick surface. I'm probably going to use wax paper, but you could use a pan, I'm sure, also. When it cools down and hardens, you're going to break it apart and put it in a blender and chop it until it's a fine powder. Once it's a fine powder, you're going to add your iron oxide, which is the 24 grams up here, and you're going to blend it again until the whole mix is a fine powder with the iron oxide mixed into it. And lastly, you're going to pack tightly this mix into whatever rocket housing you choose. I am going to try to repackage a D12 a rocket engine, an SE's rocket engine, which I've attempted multiple times on different videos with some good results, some bad results, but uh, I'll try this one once more in a D12 engine. That's it. Let's go make our corn syrup rocket fuel. These are, of course, the four items we need to make our rocket fuel. 186 grams of potassium nitrate pre-weighed. 51 grams of plain old table sugar or sucrose pre-weighed. 63 grams of corn syrup, pre-weighed. 24 grams of iron oxide, which is 8% of our 300 grams of rocket fuel. I'm going to go ahead and remove these items. There's our potassium nitrate, our sugar, our corn syrup, and our iron oxide, and then start adding them because the iron oxide doesn't go into the end, of course. So here's our potassium nitrate. sugar, and then the one that's going to be the hardest to get all of it, but our corn syrup. The heat is turned on. You can start seeing the corn syrup already bubble. So I'm going to get to mixing this and um, it's going to take a bit because this has to boil at those high temperatures for a little bit, good 10-15 minutes. I'll watch that closely so it doesn't burn, but I'll be coming back periodically. As this cooks, it's going to tan, of course, as it gets caramelized. The important thing is not to have anything turn black on you, because at that point you've basically just produced carbon, which is not really a good additive to a rocket engine. As long as the center portion here doesn't turn black, you're good. Some of this outside stuff might. Just wanted to bring that point out. Um, it's starting to actually boil here and you can still see a granulation in here like individual granules of sugar possibly potassium nitrate you really want all of that to be gone so that it is a very smooth looking mixture so the granulation is gone pretty much and this was actually boiling uh, for about maybe 10 minutes and then all of a sudden it stopped here so we're pretty close to being done i think with the mixing and the heating it's next got to uh, of course get poured out on some wax paper which i'm gonna do hardest thing about this is getting it hot enough so that you can scoop it 
but not too hot that you start burning it. At this point, it's just important to get as much as you can off the pan and into the uh, onto the wax paper so it can harden. So I pulled the stuff off the wax paper and uh, it's rock hard like you'd expect. Next thing we got to do is I'm going to break this into smaller pieces, put it in a blender, grind it up good. To be continued. These broken bits are just about the right size to put in the blender now. I would not suggest using a brand new blender. Although I don't know that it would actually cause problems. Also, this stuff is completely non-toxic, as you can probably imagine. So using your fingers is fine. Okay. Taking me a half hour of grinding on and off just so I could let the motor rest from time to time to get this into a powder. So I'm going to let it sit for a little bit to let all this uh, dust in here to settle down. Uh, we'll take a look at it and then add our iron oxide. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's check this out here. You can see some of the powder escaped around the edges here. It's pretty fine. Uh, check that out. Okay, looks good actually. It looks nice and ground up, which you'd expect. So I'm going to add the iron oxide here. I'm going to first have to scrape the edges, of course, and uh, we'll grind it all together. I just used a simple paintbrush to push this down. It's pretty loose actually. And in goes the iron oxide. Okay, seems pretty good. I'm going to let it set again for a little bit and we'll open it up. It's been about 15 minutes again. Looks like the iron oxide made this stuff slide off the walls of the glass better. It was under a little bit of suction there. There's still a little bit of powder floating around. Let me get this to focus. Look at that. Looks pretty uniform. And with the iron oxide, you'd expect that reddish hue everywhere. All right, time to dump this out and pack it in an engine. All right, I'm going to try to gently pour this into this flask without too much flying around, which is actually not as hard as it looks. I don't know if I said that right, but however, no, there we go. All right, this should be the last bit of it right here. Got a couple things here i'm going to try uh as the housing this is three quarter inch uh, schedule 40 pvc so maybe cut off two or three inches and then i have this from some old fireworks here and then i usually use an epoxy mixed with kitty litter to make the uh, nozzle i cut two pieces off that pvc they are two and three quarters inch long which is the same size as an sd's rocket engine as far as length goes and then i put a little bit of duct tape on the top here cut it around it Make it look neat, I guess. But I did that primarily so as we pack that engine powder in here, obviously it's hitting something other than the ground. One last thing I did before I packed these is because I used an epoxy a kitty litter mix for the nozzle, which really does work well, um, I drilled four holes at the end here so that when I put the nozzle portion in here, some of the epoxy can leak into those holes and it holds the nozzle in place because I've had rocket engines just blow the nozzle right off that is pretty smooth on the inside there. And the other thing is mark the inside of these as to how deeply to pack the powder. So each one's marked. I'm gonna just do one first and test it before I try the second. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna add a little bit each time and then pack it because if you fill the whole thing up and then pack it, 
you'll never get as good of a packing as if you just do a small amount and then pack it like so oh well, that's a pretty light powder there coming out a bit but that's all right This is finished. It's been packed tightly. You know that by turning it upside down and nothing comes out. So next, got to mix the epoxy together, mix the kitty litter in the epoxy, and then put that on the top here, smooth it out, wait till it dries, and then drill our hole through the center. The epoxy is on the left and the hardener is on the right. And you can use any kind of epoxy for this. This just happens to be the one I grabbed. Try to get as much kitty litter as you can because obviously the heat from the engine burning uh, doesn't affect the kitty litter. It's clay, but it can, of course, soften your epoxy. So the more kitty litter, the better off. Drilling the hole, I'm using a 964 bit here. Just needs a fuse now and I'll probably tape it to a stick for this first try. This one is completely ready to light and see how it works. I'm going to start the one on the cardboard tube next. I think I'll follow the same procedure exactly so I'm not going to video everything I do there and I do want to light this one before I'm finished with that one just to make sure everything works good. Okay here goes the test. It just got done raining and it's kind of dark out here but I'm anxious to see how this goes. Darn it, hit a tree. Otherwise, not too bad. The tube is filled and packed, and also the nozzle material has been packed in there too. I did not fill this completely. This particular powder is, it looks like it's great, but it's not gonna lift a lot of weight. And sometimes lifting its own weight cannot be done. So before I fill something completely, I only partially filled this one. So I need to drill a hole in it. I'm gonna use a 532nd bit to do that. And then I also filled an empty D12 here. That's just a, we call a Q-tip right there that I use to keep the hole open so the powder doesn't pour out as you pack it from the top here. So I'll finish both of these up and we'll give them a try. Okay, we're gonna try the tube that came from Fireworks. This is a heavy rocket. Sometimes they don't work that great, we'll see. Took a bit to get the uh, right force, but it definitely worked. And the last one here is the repackaged D12. I think I'll leave the light on this time. Beautiful. I just have far too many trees.